Hey, it's Matt with Full Race Motorsports. Behind me is the 2.7 liter Bronco, and in front of me is our brand new intercooler for the platform. It's offered in silver and black. It's a really simple installation. We just recently did a back-to-back -back dyno test, factory intercooler versus our intercooler. Corey did the installation on his back at the dyno in under 20 minutes. During that session, we did zero tuning, only data logging. We're on a roller dyno, 91 octane. We saw an increase in 12 horsepower to the wheels. We saw lower IAT temps. Again, it's a really, really simple installation. We're gonna show you how to do that right now. Before we get started, let's get familiar with what comes inside the box. This here is your intercooler. The side with the logos on it faces towards the front of the vehicle. Your inlet outlet faces towards the rear of the vehicle. If you notice, your inlet and outlet do utilize your factory O-ringed quick disconnect. The top of the intercooler is going to be the side with the pegs that are furthest apart from each other. The bottom of the intercooler will be the side with the pegs closer to each other. You're also going to receive two brackets. One's labeled A, one's labeled B. The A bracket is going to be your driver's side bracket. The long side goes towards the front of the vehicle and it's going to L towards the inside of the intercooler. Your B bracket is your passenger side bracket. The long side is going to go towards the front of the vehicle and it also is going to L towards the inside of the intercooler. Now that you're familiar, let's get started. To get started, we're going to remove the front skid plate to gain access to the factory intercooler. This is four 15 millimeter bolts. The front bolts will need to be removed completely. The rear bolts just slightly loosened because the skid plate is slotted, it'll slide out. Next, we'll remove the bottom brackets holding the factory intercooler in place. Again, this is two 15 millimeter bolts on each bracket. There are two brackets. Next, we'll remove the quick disconnects from the inlet and outlet of the factory intercooler. You can do this by hand. A pick tool might make it a little easier to remove those clips. Now, the only thing holding the intercooler in place are its top rubber bushings. Pull down on the intercooler, it'll pop right out. Next, we'll remove the top factory intercooler bracket. You're gonna use a 15 millimeter wrench. There's two bolts, preferably a ratcheting wrench because it doesn't angle and kick that wrench up into the vehicle. It's a real tight space. This bolt won't come straight up and out. You have to angle it out. We'll also angle it in on the way back in. We will be reusing the factory rubber bushings and factory bottom brackets. Your rubber bushings are likely still in your bottom brackets, but the top bushings will have to be swapped over from the top of the factory intercooler to your new full race intercooler. Make sure that you maintain the orientation of the rubber bushings, do not flip them upside down. We'll now install the supplied top brackets, remembering the orientation we went over at the beginning. You'll wanna hand tighten the 15 millimeter bolts because the brackets are slotted so you will be able to adjust the intercooler once it's in the vehicle. Now we're gonna lift the intercooler up into the vehicle. Before you do that, make sure the inlet and outlet clips are in the unlocked position. Also, put a little silicone lube on the O-ring, it'll make installation a lot easier. Lift the intercooler up, push the top rubber bushings up into the brackets that you just installed, and then put the inlet and outlet pipes on the intercooler and lock the clip in place. Remember, the top brackets should still be only finger tight, we will have some adjusting to do to get those bottom brackets on. We'll now reinstall our bottom brackets. You push the rubber bushing onto the intercooler and then tighten the brackets down. The intercooler will take a little bit of adjusting to get the bolt started. Once you do have them in place, tighten that bolt fully and then you can move back to the top brackets and tighten those fully as well. Tightening the top bracket is easier as we're doing now from the outside of the vehicle. Now all that's left to do is replace the skid plate and you're done. And that's it. If my math is correct, we touched a total of 10 bolts. They were all 15 millimeters. We got rid of these plastic intakes. We got cooler air going into the motor. It's gonna give you more reliability, more power, probably one of the easiest installs you've ever done. It's good. It's beautiful.